Praise God. Praise God. I pray that you are having a blessed day in the Lord. Give him honor and give him praise. Let me know if you hear me and you can see me. Come on, somebody. Come on up in here. I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all know when I get on one, I'm on one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let me know that you can hear me and see me. Someone let me know that you can hear me and see me. Anybody? Hello, everyone. Let me know that you can hear and see me, please, before I begin. Thank you so much, Leanne. I appreciate you. All right, so let me just get in it because I have to get in it. Let me tell you something. God has been, oh, my God. That's why you haven't seen me on here. Hallelujah. I feel the power of God. I'm on one. I'm on one. I would not apologize for it. Let me tell you something. When you start to really see who God is and what he requires of you, your mandate, your calling, you start getting in prayer like never before because that is our portion. Not so much to talk all the time. And I had to learn that just like we're all learning and processing. So I have a couple of videos to do. So I'm after to hit it. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Here we go. God has been talking to me for about maybe two or three weeks. And the timing of God is the timing of God. I have to do it when he says so. He said, you know why there's so much murder, mayhem between family members, all kind of stuff. People killing each other, boyfriends killing girlfriends, vice versa. Especially of the black race. Yeah, I'm saying it like I'm saying it. This is not towards anyone else. Come on somebody, hallelujah. But I'm speaking to everyone, but mainly to us. So God was saying, he says, it's the spirit of offense, Deanna. He said, because when you get in the spirit of offense, your defense becomes down. I'm going to say it again. When you get in the spirit of offense, your defense becomes weakened. What is your defense? Your faith walk, your faith talk, your belief in God because you're angry. So when, oh Lord, I got to walk this thing out. I got to walk this thing out. This is the example he gave me. If you look in the Bible, because I'm not going to tell you, because I want you to start getting in your Bible while you can before they take them. This, there's a story of a prophet. It's called the man of God. I'm going to repeat that. It's a story of a prophet. It's called the man of God. I'll never forget when God gave me that as an example years ago about being obedient. God said, not just as a prophet, but as a woman of God or a man of God, we're supposed to be obedient. So I'm going to give you a little paraphrase of the story. So God told this man of God, he said, go in this town, rebuke them and get out. Do not slumber. Do not eat. Do not do anything. God allowed a lying spirit to come into a fake prophet's mouth. And he told the guy, he said, well, God changed his mind. God wants you to come back with me and eat. And that prophet did it. And as they were eating, the fake prophet went into a real prophetic and said, because thou have been disobedient, when you go outside, a lion's going to meet you and you're going to die. And that's exactly what happened. When God gave me that story, I was like, oh God, he said, that's how important it is for a prophet or any man or woman of God to be obedient. I'm trying to get y'all to see something. So what happens is the spirit of offense, when it comes in, it kills all that, your prophetic, your wisdom, your discernment, because you're upset. You're not trying to hear God. You're not trying to hear anybody. You, you're trying to get your point across because you're in the spirit of offense. So what I've learned to do is when I get in the spirit of offense, because we all do, pull back, especially from social media, go to your God, get on your face, start praying, say, God, you saw what they did. I didn't like it, blah, 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 blah. Vent to God first before you pick up that phone, even call your girlfriend or whomever. Because they may not be really safe for real and just instigating. Because there's an instigating spirit on this earth too. Wanting to see people get killed. Wanting to see people into it. Wanting to see people expose people on Facebook. Yeah, I said it. Because if you was a real man of God, a woman of God, when they go to you, you'd be like, hold on. Have you prayed first? Hmm. Yeah, I know what they did, but did you pray first? I told you, let me tell y'all something. Long time ago when stuff was going on and I was complaining to God. I said, God, but you see, say, both of y'all wrong. And I was like, he said, I'm the only one right in any situation. Mm. Are y'all ready for me? Both of us is wrong. So even if you think you're right, God said you're wrong. Because guess what? Are you going by the scripture? Oh, y'all ain't ready for me tonight. Hallelujah. 
So what's happening is, and that's why you've seen people murder, mayhem, chaos. Because the spirit of offense, when it gets in, it stops the flow of the Holy Spirit. So now you're not thinking in faith. You're not thinking with wisdom and discernment. That's how people are killing each other. That's how people are getting on Facebook, so say exposing and all kind of ridicule. You understand? Oh, hallelujah. God says, stop getting in the spirit of offense because it weakens your defense. Body of Christ, and not even, even if you're in body of Christ, just anybody. We're supposed to pray more, talk less. We're doing the opposite. The spirit of the world then came into the church and then came into our homes. That's why parents are killing children. Um, children are killing parents. All kind of stuff is going on. There's a spirit of lawlessness which is connected to the spirit of offense. There's never, there's not, there's always a lot of spirits working. Just like if you have the spirit of joy, you have the spirit of meekness. Well, so it as is in the kingdom of heaven is in the kingdom of darkness. So when you see strife, you're going to see a spirit of greed. When you see a spirit of offense, you're going to see a spirit of murder, lawlessness, angry, rage. You get, the, you get, you get it, what I'm saying? God wants us to start praying against these spirits. These are territorial spirits that come to steal, kill, and destroy. And not just one person. Because guess what? When you get into that mode, everybody's affected because you don't know what's going to happen. People are killing each other over anything. Oh, come on, somebody. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus, but that is where we at. It's time to pray more. It's time to fast more like never before. We're going back on a fast Monday. I don't care what nobody said. You know, oh, I'm, I feel the power of God. Y'all know what I feel. I don't care what nobody say or do. Hallelujah. I'm going to say what God say to say. You got people on here, preachers, teachers. Uh, everything shouldn't be spiritual warfare, this and that. What Bible are you reading? Oh, hallelujah. What Bible are you reading, sir, ma'am? Because my Bible says that if you live holy, must much, much tribulations. You will suffer much. You will go through much. But God says, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. As a matter of fact, we got a whole book of it. Ephesians 6 says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against every high thing, spiritual wickedness in high places. What Bible are you reading? Downplaying spiritual warfare. The devil is a liar, and so are you. Stop doing that. We're supposed to equip the people of God, not strip them. I just said, somebody write that in the comments for me. Equip and not strip. That's what's going on in today's society. Oh, oh, it's too much. It's too much. We're in the book of Timothy, where people want to hear what they want to hear. They want to say what they want to say. They want to do what they want to do. The devil is a liar. Let me tell you what's going on. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm on one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel the spirit of God. Let me tell y'all something. So, me and my brother in Christ was having a conversation tonight. Um, later on, I mean, later before I got on here. And he was talking about pastors that are being disobedient. They don't want prophets, real prophets in the church these days. You want to know why? Because we see. They want the fake ones up in there because they can tell them what to say. They can tell them what to do. You heard what I said. <laughs> why y'all think I've had so many problems in church? Not every church is bad. But the ones that I have been through, most of them, not all of them, I see you. And, and they'll come up to me. You think I'm, and, and be looking yeah, I'm real. I see you. You see me. I see you. Mm, yeah. Now, let's get it. Let's get it. Understanding. Our position is not to bash them, but to pray for them. But they like what they do. <laughs> Can Satan cast out Satan? Huh? I'm on one. I'm going to tell it like a T.I. is. But prophets also have to operate in a spirit of maturity and wisdom and honor. And authorization. If you're not authorized, you better shut up. I had to learn the hard way. I'm going to keep it real up in here. I had to learn. Everything I see is not to be said. But most of it to be prayed for. So let me tell you what's, what's happening. Why they don't want the prophets up in there. Because when they're doing wrong, they don't want nobody to tell them nothing. And some of y'all, y'all know it, but y'all don't say nothing. Which God going to hold you accountable as well. Especially if you're an elder or a deaconess or a deacon. So... We were talking about something. He said, well, why? I said, you don't understand what's going on? This new generation, they didn't just learn it. They learned it from the old generation. When they was doing what they was doing, how they were doing what they was doing when they was doing it. Mm -hmm. But this new, new church, which I'm part of that new, new church. We don't care who you are. We're going to tell you about yourself if God permits us. Hello. Hello and goodbye. 
<laughs> it's love, though. It is the way you do it. It's not what you do. It's how you do it. You don't get to just say what you want. Because you got to understand something about David and Saul. Saul was wrong as two left feet. But yet, when the young man came and said, I killed Saul, David said, and you wasn't scared to fall upon the Lord's anointing? That man or woman of God are still anointed. You better watch your mouth. You better watch how you say what you say. And I had to learn it too. In this hour, it is very critical. The way you walk, the way you talk, the way you act. And you don't have to expose nobody because God going to make them expose their self. That's where we at. Yeah, 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 yeah. You ain't, And I know it hurts. Sometimes people can be very, treat you very unfair. Our position is to pray for them. God is going to do the exposing. God is going, and you may not even see it, but you're going to feel it. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So our position, and thus said the Lord, stop getting offended. Because truth be told, we have all are flawed. We all have said something and done something that we're not proud of. We talk too much. We gossip too much. We slander too much. You heard what I said up in here. Stop that. Pray for your brother. Pray for your sister. Because you don't like it. Okay, okay, okay. You want to expose. Okay. What if somebody exposed you? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How would you feel? Extend the same grace and mercy that God extends to you, my brother, my sister, pastor, preacher, teacher. Because when you're pointing a finger, there's three point back at you. Mm. I'm up in here. I'm up in here tonight. Don't play with me. The spirit of offense is what's killing us. You got to get to a point of maturity. Yeah, it hurts God, but I'm going to go to you first. Yeah, it was wrong, God, but I'm going to go to you first. We got to go back to Bible. The world then came in and showed us its ugly ways, and we have adapted them. I'm going to tell them a piece of my mind. Did God authorize you to do that? I'm going to say this. Did God authorize you? Because if not, you won't get tagged just like they're going to get tagged. -tag. Hello? Hello? We got to come back to order. We got to come back to order. We got to come back to order, God says. Just out of order. Wondering why we don't see people getting saved. Healed, delivered, for real. Have you read the Bible from beginning to end? God deals with his people. He don't need any assistant. And the last assistant he had, i.e. the devil, he got kicked out of heaven. So he, he's not looking for another assistant. He don't need an assistant to anything. Because God said, I neither sleep nor slumber. You know what that means? I'm watching all y'all. Hallelujah. Let me pray. I'm watching all y'all. How can you talk about anybody? And that's all of us. So we have to be mindful. 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 I'm, I'm, oh, hallelujah. That spirit of offense is real, people. And God doesn't like it. You know, Joseph could have been offended after his brothers had did. Look what they did. And look what happened. But when he got in a position to bless them and not curse them, he chose to bless them. That is the lesson on tonight. God says, bless your enemies. That's scripture too, by the way. How is it that the same fountain that you're using to bless God, you're cursing your brother and your sister, and yet you say you love God? Somebody lying. Somebody lying. Whew. We got to do better. We all have to do better. This is a time of repentance. This is a time of examination. Examine yourself, said God. Hallelujah. So I don't have to judge you. <laughs> Judgment is in the house of God. Let me say that again. Judgment is in the house of God. Let me say that again. Judgment is in the house of God. Because everything that look like God is not God. Everything that sound like God is not God. Let me tell you something. People don't want to be holy no more. Well, that's too much. That's why you ain't got no power now. Pastor, preacher, teacher, apostle. That's why you ain't got no power. You got power of the mouth. And we know what the mouth can do. The mouth tear down on people. The mouth do this and that. But when you got real power, and I had to learn this. Y'all know how I used to be. I, let's be real. I, I don't mind being transparent. I had good intentions, but I was out of order. Yeah, I said it. I learned, God, is this you or is this not you? And most of the time, God will tell you, shut your mouth. Pray about it. I got this. 
God does not need our help, people. That's what I'm got on here to say. God don't need your help. But what moved God is prayer and fasting. He said, this kind come out but by fasting and praying. But we get up on Facebook, this, that, that. Oh, Lord have mercy. We better learn to love each other again. The enemy is trying to take the love out of our hearts. Don't you understand that? And I don't care who you are, how anointing you are, how much money you got. Because y'all y'all tend to think that money equal anointing. The devil is a lie. Because some of y'all are not even good stewards. Y'all get some money and you you show everybody. This is how blessed I am. Can you lay hands for real? Can you heal and deliver for real? Do you have the authentic anointing or you just your mouth anointing? Oh, I just said something. Somebody right there. It's just your mouth anointing. Because anybody could get high and loud and then, low, 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 low. How low can you go? Are you anointed for real? Because it's in the secret place that God will show everybody publicly who you are. Time to stop fronting and stunting. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah to his name. The foundation of God is love and faith. Without love for your brother and sister and faith, you are not a true child of God. I'm sorry. And yes, the Bible says, be angry but sin not. That means don't go too far. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, I'm telling you. We got to come back to order. And God told me to tell you, when things happen, God is not trying to punish you. God is trying to position you. Somebody write that in the comments. God is not trying to punish you. God is trying to position you. God don't punish people. Now what he do allow is testing Job. Go ahead, test him. Test her, but touch not their life. And we get mad at God. And, oh, oh, oh. I got mad when that situation happened. I, I didn't understand it. God, 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 I understand completely now. You wanted to push this out of me because I was still doing that. And I'm not talking about sinning, but, but. Let me tell you what true sin is. Ooh, I'm, I, I, I'm walking up in here tonight heavy. True sin is not just doing bad things. It is not doing what God told you to do. Hallelujah. You didn't hear what I just said. True sin is not just doing bad things. Not doing what God have called you to do with all your heart, mind, body, and soul. It is sin, said God, because somebody need what's in you. Pastor, preacher, teacher, apostle. Stop getting offended. Stop getting offended. I'm going to say it again. Stop getting offended, said God. And learn and listen. Our position in this hour is to listen and pray and fast. Somebody write that. Listen, pray, and fast. But the first thing is walk in obedience. I told you that story about that man of God because he walked in disobedience. You don't think God knew what was going to happen. That's why God, God will allow you to be tested. God already know us. He wants you to know you. This is the area, God, I'm having a problem in. God, help me. And God, I sent a test. Everything is a test. Pass the test. I don't like it. Pass the test. It don't feel good. Pass the test. It hurts. Pass the test. Could run in your mouth. Could be offended. Jesus could have got offended. Even of God. When he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. God, if this, if this cup could pass from me. But nevertheless, thy will. Some of y'all get angry, mad, and, and you know. But notice Jesus say, nevertheless, thy will and not my will. You know that my will stuff want to do with just pride. And that's connected to greed. Selfishness. I just told you. It's, it's never just one spirit working. See, the kingdom of darkness, they work together. All of spirits are working together. Only in the body of Christ, everybody want to be a superhero. Shero. Mm -hmm. Yeah, keep on. I told y'all this before. It's called fivefold minister for a reason. We're supposed to come together. And that's when we deliver a mighty blow. But now we all, everybody want to be a star. Everybody, oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. We better get it together because what's coming down the pipeline. It's heavy. They plotting and planning. They don't like the, the people of God, the men of God, the women of God. Persecution is here on a soft, on a soft stance, but they doing it. Cause if you think that just happened to me, 
you don't know you don't know who I am for real they try to bring us in bondage the spirit of Jezebel is still alive and the spirit of Jezebel can also be in a man that is manipulation that is control that is witchcraft anything to try to stop the flow of the prophetic anything to try to stop you to make you think you're not a child of God when Joseph was in the pit don't you understand it didn't look like the dreams oh come on somebody i'm speaking to you prophetically it didn't look like what god showed him don't you know when god show you stuff and you start speaking it the enemy say i'm gonna make you out a liar and god that's when your test gonna start and i'm reminded of paul when he says i have this thorn on my side and god said my grace is sufficient for thee brother and sister his grace is sufficient for us and it doesn't feel good all the time. And, and no, you don't have a lot of people around sometimes. You have to encourage yourself, David. In this season, let me tell you what's happening. It's testing time. The wheat and the tares, they grow up together. God want to know, are you really mine or not? Mm, I just said something. And truth be told, people are exposing themselves. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Because what's in you. Is definitely going to come out. The spirit of truth is so heavy on this earth on purpose. The spirit of God is heavy on this earth. Why do you think, think they're exposing themselves? That's why he says, test the spirit by the spirit. That's why people get in trouble. You're not doing that. I don't care who it is. God said, test the spirit by the spirit to see if it's of me. But you don't know that if you don't get in your word. You cannot receive the Holy Ghost. All the way without a, a surrendered mind. That's why he says renew your mind. And the only way you can renew your mind is by the word of God. The word of God cleanses, purifies, strengthens, reveals, and heals. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. So, whew, I feel the power of God. Let me tell you something. We're in some high, perilous times. We're in some high times. But God is still God. You see, the enemy is trying to make you think that they're in control. Yeah, in some ways. I love the Old Testament and the New Testament and the old saints that we read about. That's our brothers and sisters, by the way. That's not just no stories. Let me tell you something about them. They knew their God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do what you want. The apostles, I love talking about them because it's true. You don't think they knew when Jesus said, okay, I'm going to blow the Holy Spirit on you. <sighs> Go into the whole land and preach you don't think they knew they was going to die? Some like Jesus? What am I saying? You have forgotten who you are, God says. This is what we do. This is what we do. This is what we do. Who's scared? Who's scared of what? Who? What? God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Soldier up. That's what I say. Quit acting all wimpy. It hurts. Gird up your lion, said the Lord, like a man and woman of God. <laughs> yeah, that's where we at. That's where we at. Be of good courage. Have I not commanded you, said God, Joshua? All right, God. All right. Whew. So I just pray that you be encouraged. And I pray that we learn to operate more godly. That's it. The world is acting crazy out there because the church don't have it together in here. It's time to get together. It's time to get together. The enemy comes to divide. And a house divided cannot stand, said the Lord. We don't have to attack each other. Hallelujah. That's what the enemy wants. The enemy wants us attacking each other. So, I, I'm going to be praying. I'm going to be fasting. We're starting to fast again on Monday. That's another thing. People be, <laughs> I, I hear what they say. Let me tell you something. Some things I address, some things I don't. You could talk about me all day long. Have y'all not figured out I don't care? What matters to me the most is when I die, and I will. I hear, well done, thy good and faithful servant. With all due respect, I don't care what none of y'all say. With all due respect, that is. Miss me. Miss me. Miss me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to hear, well done, thy good and faithful servant. And that's what's wrong. Y'all be worrying about everybody what they think, everybody what they say, except the man, him instead of them. 
trying to encourage y'all. I'm trying to encourage y'all. That's a trick of the enemy. Because, and the only reason that could happen is if you don't know who you are. I don't care what happened to me. And y'all know some rough things, some unfair things have happened. I still am who I am. Why? Not because I'm so great. Because he called me. He gave me a mandate. He told me, this is what you're going to do. And do with all your heart, your mind, your body, and soul. Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. And then everything else will be added to you. We got to go back to that people of God. That's why we're strained. I call it the dangling carrot. You know how you focus? Because we've all been, I mean, oh, I'm a love God. I'm a serve God. But he presents to you something you want and, and, and you start. You know how you had that hunger look? Ooh. Then he got you. Stay focused in this hour. Tunnel vision. Tunnel vision, said the Lord. Keep your eyes on me. Get close to me in this hour. Don't look to the right. Don't look to the left. Hallelujah. So God bless you. God keep you. Let me tell you something. I'm stronger. Mm. Mm. Didn't know it was going to do that. But pain will push you into your purpose. Hallelujah. He never said it was going to be good. But he said, he said, I'll be with you. I'll be with you, Lord, always. Even to the end. Selah. Y'all know what time it is. Roll our soldiers for that is truly who we are. Let's walk it. Let's talk it. Let's be about it. In Jesus Christ of Nazareth's name. Mm. God bless.